Love delights to serve and to give. Jesus wants to serve you. Obviously, they're all tired. The disciples were all waiting for one another. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into His hands, He took a basin and a towel, began to wash the disciples' feet. He's showing us in the upper room of the heaven what He is doing right now. He's washing your feet. The washing here is the washing of the water with the Word. The one who has all power in His hands is the one who has all love in his heart. Have you availed yourself of this washing? Hi, this is Joseph Prince. I want to warmly welcome you to this week's Gospel Partner episode. If you are new here, my team and I would love to connect with you and send you weekly encouragements, pastoral insights, and exclusive content when you sign up for our Gospel Partner newsletter. I will also be sending you this special gift so please look out for it in your email inbox. I pray that as you listen to today's sermon, you experience a fresh and personal touch from our Lord Jesus. God bless you. Good morning, church. Are you ready for some good news? Praise the Lord. We have some testimonies that have come in from our last Sunday's uh, time of ministering. And I pray that these testimonies will bless you and encourage you. Right, the first testimony comes to us uh, from a sister from Switzerland. And she writes that, I've been suffering from shingles for some time. I could feel the pain in my lower right abdomen, near my hip, all the way to the lower back. According to the doctor, it would take at least a month before my condition gets better. On Sunday, the 14th of January, Pastor Prince prayed over a condition of pain on the right side around the waist and mentioned that the person suffering from this condition hasn't been able to sit for long. Praise the Lord, as Pastor Prince prayed over the condition, the pain in my body went away instantly. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Wonderful testimony from Switzerland. And as she goes on to uh, conclude by saying, thank you for your ministry, Pastor Prince. You are truly a blessing to the world. Your teachings have set me free from a life of condemnation. And we pray that she'll be healed of the shingles as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Next testimony is uh, from a sister from Singapore. And she writes that at the beginning of this year, I began exercising, and after jogging, I experienced pain in my right knee. I wasn't sure if I had twisted it. During the first service on 14th of January, 2024, Pastor Prince called out my condition, and I claimed the healing for myself. The following day, I went for a jog, and my condition was completely healed. Praise God, that's not all. I could even jog three kilometers without stopping. God has increased my strength. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me and Pastor Prince for calling out my condition. Praise the Lord for healing this sister of a knee condition. All right, next testimony is also from a sister from Singapore. Uh, she writes that, I attended the 11.30 a.m. service at the New Creation Church on 14th of January, 2024. On that day, Pastor Prince prayed for various conditions, including knee pain. I stood in faith for a friend who was suffering from this condition, but it did not occur to me to pray for my own knees. So selfless, this sister, you know? Wow. Which had been giving me pain for several years. I could not carry out certain workouts and I would also have to take deep breaths before I climbed the stairs due to the pain. The next day, I went to pick my daughter at her student care centre. Along the way, I had to climb a long flight of stairs. However, to my surprise, I did not feel any pain in my knees. It suddenly dawned on me that my knees could have been healed during the service the day before. So, I tried to climb more stairs and did squats the next day. Amazingly, there's now no more pain or cracking sound in my knees. I'm so in awe of this miraculous healing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm sure you all are aware that somehow we've had quite a number of uh, testimonies pertaining to knee pain. And you know why God is healing many people of their knee pain? So that they can walk up to the upper room. Hallelujah. Need to walk up the flight of stairs, you know, to the upper room. Right, the final testimony is a special one. It's from a brother from Singapore. And he writes that uh, I used to suffer from a heart condition known as mitral valve prolapse. After years of monitoring and testing, the doctor finally discharged me with a clean bill of health. Despite this, I continued to undergo annual health checkups, including electrocardiogram, also known as ECG, uh, and as a precautionary measure. measure. On 19th of October, 2023, after a routine stress ECG, 
I received a notification from the National Heart Centre indicating the need for another heart test in a few weeks' time due to abnormalities. This was unprecedented and raised concerns about the possibility of a deteriorating valve condition. Despite feeling anxious, I chose to believe God for health and wholeness. During the Sunday service on the 22nd of October 2023, Pastor Prince ministered healing, uh, specifically addressing a heart condition and using the term valve. I knew it was God calling out for me. Tears welled up in my eyes as I turned to look at my wife, who was also tearing. I immediately claimed my healing and I shouted, Amen, when Pastor Prince declared that we would receive a new valve and a new heart. Over the following two weeks, I held on to Pastor Prince's teachings, rejecting negative thoughts and reminding myself that I am already healed and divine health is mine through Jesus' sacrifice. In November, I underwent the heart test and was informed that I should return for the results in two weeks' time. During the anxious wait, I would confess that I'm a child of God and Jesus has already taken away all my sickness and given me His divine health. I also found comfort in Pastor Prince's sermon on putting on the armour of God. When the results were finally out, the doctor told me that everything was fine and even said that I have a strong, healthy heart, all honour and glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord for these wonderful testimonies. And right now, church, let us welcome Pastor Prince. Praise God. Good morning, church. You all feeling good? Now, that verse that the Lord gave to us last week, that that brother used to learn the second language. Right? And uh, his mind became sharper. Remember what the Lord said? If you're suffering from any, uh, any sort of mental decline or cognitive problems, to confess these scriptures, do you all memorize it? Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to quote it out loud. Amen. We are in the presence of the Lord and we are believing God to confirm it, to confirm the word with signs and wonders that even your children and your spouse will say, wow, how come you remember all these things and you still forget food, right? That would be the manifestation. Are you all ready? Now I'm quoting mine from uh, the old King James. You feel free to quote from whatever version you have memorized from. Are you ready? It's from Psalms 92. Let's go. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they shall still bring forth fruit. Did you quote that? Did you quote the steel? They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there's no unrighteousness in Him. It's getting softer towards the last part. Okay, anyway, memorize that. Amen? The, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. And I've shared before, but you know what? I just feel like we have probably a new audience or whatever. The Lord wants me to say this again. The righteous shall flourish like the palm trees for no reason. It's not for any reason that, you know, God just say something and liken to this or liken to that. When God likens something, study it. The palm tree can live for a long time. And recently, they experimented in Israel, they experimented with a 2,000-year-old seed date seed from the palm tree. And guess what? It sprouted. It sprouted. They call that tree now. You can Google it. Don't do it now. Alright? They call that tree Methuselah tree. Okay? So when God says that you are the righteous, who is the righteous? You. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. That we are like the palm tree. Guess what? Amen? You'll be around for a long time. Claim it. You know, there's another verse in Isaiah that says, for as, long, for as the days of a tree, so are the days of my people. God is saying, not, not the people of the world, my people. 
For as the days of a tree, so are the days of my people. We receive that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. How many receive that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And all the people said, Amen. All right, John 13, the upper room. I'd like to show you the video. Huh? The video is available on YouTube now. All right, the year of living in the upper room. Okay, please uh, uh, watch the video because they put in a lot of effort to make, do the video. All right, at least they, they know that it's, it's well appreciated. Amen. Okay, you want to see the video? No, la. time is past. Right? So, um, I, I am aware of the time and uh, we want to uh, cover what the Spirit wants us to look at. Nothing more, nothing less. Amen? Where the Urim and the Tumim lights up. Okay? That's where I'm going to preach. So John 13 is the beginning of the upper room. Amen? Living in the upper room. Upper room is... The, the idea there is it is not touching the ground. Okay? It is living in the heavenlies. Praise the Lord. And uh, last week we covered, we are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. I hope that you've done that confession. Once in a while, it's good for you to just say, Father, I thank you that I was crucified. Was. I was crucified with Christ. Your history in Christ, God put you in Christ, happened at the cross. The part of you that loved to sin, the part of you that, that, that uh, is estranged from God, alienated from the life of God, that part of you that caused you so much problem, that you inherited from Adam, all right, that part of you was crucified with Christ at the cross. So I was crucified with Christ. I died with Christ when He died. I was buried with Christ when He was buried. I was raised with Christ when He was raised. And I was made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. All right, that's the upper room. Amen? And then we have two attitudes, right? Two attitudes. When we are seated here, the Bible says that in the ages to come, He might show us the exceeding riches of His kindness towards us. The riches of His grace in His kindness towards us. Okay? So show them that verse, uh, Ephesians 2 again. Notice, He made us sit together that in the ages to come, He might show. So there's a show coming. And He's going to show you what? The riches of His grace in His kindness. So what you look forward to, and you don't want to say, what, that means the ages to come means the millennial rule and all that. No, no, no. Ages, notice the word plural. Even this age, from now on, look forward for the riches of His grace Amen. being displayed in front of you. Now, this is not a promise for the people of the world. It's a promise for God's children. And all the people said, Amen, Amen. That in the ages to come, He might show. I love it. The exceeding, He could have said just riches of His grace, but the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, when Jesus brought His disciples to the upper room, it was a large upper room that can take 120 people. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came, the birthday of the church. The Holy Spirit came, poured out, right, to show that Jesus, uh, before that, Jesus ascended on Mount of Olives and went back bodily. And the angel, uh, there were two angels there, which I believe for an occasion like this, it will be Michael and Gabriel. All right, the archangels. And uh, they said to the disciples, why are you looking up to the sky? The same Jesus that you saw go up will likewise, say likewise, come back. Come back. Will likewise come back. Which means, likewise means, you saw him go bodily, he will come back bodily. Okay, so there's a lot of teachings nowadays. Oh, there's no rapture. Oh, the, the, the coming of Jesus is all figurative. It's all, uh, you know, eerie, eerie, you know, like up there, spiritual, you know. No, my friend, that is the devil not wanting you, to, trying to rob you of the blessed hope. Listen to the word of the angel. This same Jesus that you saw go up will likewise bodily, you saw him go up bodily, you, he'll come back bodily. Amen? So where is Jesus today? Bodily. I love the fact that once upon a time, this second person of the Godhead, the Son, the Son who is love of the Father, there was a time He says, a body has thou prepared me. You know, He, he was never a man before, but He chose to be a man. He chose to have a body. And you know, that body that He has is forever. 
Just like the Hebrew servant, right after God gave the Ten Commandments, the next chapter, it says about the Hebrew servant. And if a Hebrew servant, uh, let's say uh, he's supposed to serve, in those days they have this kind of thing, just have to learn that in those days they have it. But then God gave them a law looking into the future when His Son was set everyone free from slavery. Slavery is more than just physical slavery to men. A, a deeper slavery is slavery to sin, slavery to uh, destruction, slavery to depression. Even today, we have people who are slaves to drugs. There are people who are slaves to the bottle. There are people who are slaves to their own ego. They cannot break it. They say, I can stop anytime. I can stop this addiction anytime, but they cannot. So they are slaves to it. That thing, that grass that they smoke has now dominated them. When God says in the very beginning, man is supposed to have dominion over everything, even over the grass. And now we got to have that smoke. We got to have that, 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 uh, that bottle. We got to have that. You know, my friend, Jesus came to set us free by becoming a slave. So He was a slave. And when it's time for a slave, they can only have a slave for seven years. Okay? But if the slave chooses to remain with the master, the master will, will pierce his ear to say that he willingly chooses, instead of going free, he wants to stay with his family here because he loves the master. So that's what Jesus, Jesus took the body and that body is forever. He says to the Father, I choose to be a man forever that I might set mankind free. And he was pierced. And forevermore, all right, you must understand that he is always God. I don't have to keep on saying that, okay? You all know that I know he is divine. But he went up, up as men, as one of us. He went into the Holy of Holies and sat down as a man, as a glorified man. Just as he came down to represent God to us, now he is there representing us to God as glorified man, as ascended man. Amen. And, and God's uh, prototype is there, right? For all of us, we are no more the sons of Adam. Okay? Listen, we are now in the land of Narnia. <laughs> all right? Though we are, we are here, all right? The king, the lion <laughs> king has died. Amen. But because of his death, because of who he is, he's destroyed death. Hallelujah. And He's there as man. And our identity now is not based on the son of Adam. Okay? You understand? We can say things like, as a man, we have to accept this, have to accept that, but we are now sons of God. Amen. As He is, so are we in this world. So, Jesus told His disciples, go follow a man. Just the night before the Passover, uh, He says, Go follow a man who has a pitcher of water, okay? And he will bring you to a house. Usually women are the ones. So it's a very unique thing. It's a unique sign that they look, they look up for. In those days in Jerusalem, the women will carry the water. Our man has other works to do, all right? But women are the ones that, they're strong women and all these women, right? To have a wonderful stately carriage, all right? Carry water on your head. You see, you have a stately bearing, Amen? Oh, we are too easy because we are too busy watching drama bend down like that always. Then you wonder why you have neck pain. And still in spite of the fact you have neck pain, Jesus still heals you. But in those days, they, they, the women carry, you know, don't think they're, you know, it's suffering, you know, because they really end up with a stately carriage. Amen. And this time the Lord says, follow the man, a man who has a pitcher of water. And he will bring you to a large upper room. So we're here now. Let's follow. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that His hour had come, they are now in the upper room, that He should depart from this world to the Father, having loved His own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. I love it. I love the way the upper room opens up. Having loved His own that were in the world. Hey, He's talking about you. He loved you to the end. He loved you to the end. This word, to the end, Ayes tell us, is actually the word, he, the best word is in English is, He loved them to the uttermost. To the uttermost. And this uh, upper room is a room of love. 
And don't forget, upper room is a picture of heaven, yes. But the way it works out on earth is that it is the local church. Okay? The local church is God's dream, you know. Hello? You know, it was revealed to the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul says this, assuming by the way that you know God gave me. Paul is writing. Paul is saying God gave me the special responsibility of extending His grace to you Gentiles. Okay, just let you all know, okay, all of you, unless there's a Jew here, you're all Gentiles, all right? Now, strictly speaking, you are now a son of God, all right? You came up from Gentile background. Anyone who's a non-Jew is a Gentile. When God looks down on earth, God only sees three groups of people. Jew, either you're a Jew or a Gentile, a non-Jew, okay? Or the church of God, made of Jew and Gentile, one new man, okay? Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying? But just to let you know that we all started as Gentiles. We were saved as Gentiles, and then we become part of the church of God. So Paul is saying that uh, uh, God gave me the special responsibility of extending His grace to you Gentiles. As I briefly wrote earlier, God Himself revealed His mysterious plan to me. Okay, God revealed His plan to Paul. Now, that's what I'm saying. Paul has, a, you know, Paul, Paul has been honoured with a special revelation that God chose him for this purpose. He even calls the gospel of grace my gospel. So does that mean we don't read uh, John, we don't read uh, Peter, we don't read uh, the rest, Jude and all that? No, no, no. A thousand times on John also. Those are wonderful uh, scriptures for us today, for the church. Amen. But you must remember that there's a special revelation given to the Apostle Paul, that even Peter says many things he write hard to be understood. And part of it is like, how come we are seated with Christ, but I'm here now? <laughs> Amen? So it's a spiritual uh, position which is more real than physical. Yeah. Your spiritual can affect your physical. Yep. Okay, don't forget, long before you change, the, a lot of people are trying to change the physical, and that's what the world has. The world has no, not a choice. Thank God for uh, doctors and medicines and all that. Without that, you know, a lot of Christians would not even uh, live long enough to learn about faith, okay? But our source is God. God may use doctors. God may use secondary causes, all right? And uh, God may use uh, uh, even medicine because who, who is to say that God never gave that first idea for that medicine, that revelation of that medicine to a person for the betterment of mankind's ills, Right? So I'm not saying, but if putting your trust in medicine alone without seeing God as a source, if God leads you to do that, all right, uh, then it's okay. But if you are depending on medicine, you're self-medicating. A lot of people are self-medicating because they, they have the internet now and they search this, search that, search this, search that until they are so confused. Amen. No, no, go to the doctor and, and find out what is the right thing, okay, for you to take. Amen? So I believe in doctors. Let me say this but it's confined to what is natural. With God, it is beyond the natural. God is a spirit world, in a spirit world, amen? The spirit world, God is a spirit that created the natural world. The natural world you can touch and feel, all these things you can touch and feel, your chair and all that, your face, was created by God, who is a spirit. Whatever is palpable, whatever is natural, is temporal. Even this body is temporal. One day we'll have a glorified body. Amen. It is still matter. That, that spirit, see, that spirit body is still matter. But it is forever. No, oh, what a victory over death. Amen. I was telling the, the pastors again uh, the other day, I said that, what victory over death. That, even the book of Revelation, it says that all those who died in the sea, the sea, those who died in the sea, the sea will give up the dead. And God summons them. Think about it. You die in the sea. All right, if uh, Mr. Joss don't come, <laughs> we don't know who else comes, and takes pieces of you away. All right, if you think about it, wow. That's terrible, isn't it? You're gone in Mr. Joss' stomach and through his stomach. It's a horrible thought, right? Now. It's all scattered everywhere. Even you, you throw ashes into the sea. It's scattered, right? But the victory of death is such that God says in the book of Revelation, He will summon all the atoms of that man back into a body. It's a victory that Jesus conquered death and rose again on the third day bodily. Amen. 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 Woo! 
We hear that, we go back happy, man. Amen? Praise the Lord. I feel like saying like, to G- like Jesus said to His disciples, Blessed are your eyes for they see. And blessed are your ears for they hear. For many kings and VIPs wish to hear and see what you see and hear, and they cannot. Because you have the Holy Spirit. It can only be understood by the Holy Spirit. Those in the natural world, they only, they only go by their senses. The knowledge comes only by the senses. Amen. Okay, so Paul has, has a special plan. As briefly, um, God himself revealed his mysterious plan to me. As you read what I've written, you will understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. God did not reveal it to previous generations. God did not reveal it to previous generations. He's referring to the time of Elijah, all the Old Testament prophets, and even all of them did not know what God revealed to Paul. Okay? But now, say now. Now. By His Spirit, He has revealed it to His holy apostles and prophets. And this is God's plan. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Christ Jesus. This is the mystery. And that's why even the the disciples, they thought that when are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Their minds are all about Jewish, Jewish, uh, it's a Jewish mindset with uh, the nation of Israel being prominent. They didn't realize that Jesus came, okay? Yes, primarily to the lost ship of the house of Israel, offering the kingdom, even saying the kingdom is so near you, it's at hand. Amen. But they rejected him. So in other words, there is a 2,000 year parenthesis now, where actually it's a mystery of the church. God is now not so much, all right, focus on, now I, I didn't say God has substituted Israel. No, it's like a track, a, 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 um, a train on a track. When there's a caboose for a while, you know, they put a caboose to, at a site which will be, will, be, will be used later on, okay? But it's now on the site. God's focus now is on the church. Amen. And it's been 2,000 years now. It's long, the church, the grace, also known as the grace age, the age of grace. Do you realize the age of grace has lasted longer than the age of the law? The age of the law from the time God gave the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai until Jesus came is 1,500 years. The age of grace from Jesus' resurrection all the way until now, until now, is 2,000 years. I suspect God is not willing that any should perish. God is waiting. While the world is rebelling against Him, the world is blaspheming His name, refuse to uh, uh, deny His existence, refuse His ways and all that, He's still waiting. Like a father waiting for the prodigal son to come home. He sees any sign of the sun across the horizon, He's going to run towards the sun. Amen? Okay. By God's grace and mighty power, I've been given the privilege of serving Him by spreading this good news. Amen? Now he says, though I'm the least deserving of all God's people, God graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. Woo! Can you digest that? It was kept secret. And what's the secret? Grace and the church. The church is not a building. It's not the star. It is, it is not the star building. It is made up of many membered body of Christ. Amen. And God, God, you know, and, and the church is placed higher than even Israel. We are seated with Christ. Amen. And it's a privilege of every Jew and Gentile to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Messiah and Lord and come into this body. And what is God doing now, present tense? He is wanting everyone to turn around and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and be part of the body of Christ. So you may have a lowly idea about the church, okay? But God has the highest thoughts. It was like for 
ages before, during the time of the Old Testament, right? God was waiting. I'm going to reveal this one day. I'm going to reveal this one day. Amen. You have a big thing that you want to reveal. You say that, I want to reveal this. And you give like hints here and there in the Old Testament. Like for example, the longest chapter in the book of Genesis, you know what is it? The longest chapter is Genesis 24. In the book of Genesis, Genesis 24. What's Genesis 24? Genesis 22 is Abraham offered his son. That is Jesus being offered by the Father. Imagine God Himself provided a sin offering for us. Right? What's Genesis 24? Abraham told his servant, unnamed servant, go and find a bride for my son. Come on. Come on. He's not named because he's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not call attention to himself, but to the son. And they found who? Rebecca. A type of the church. It's hidden there. Even though it's a mystery in the Old Testament, it's hidden there. Right? Amen? And she must say yes to the offer of becoming the bride of Isaac. And along the journey back, the long, long journey back to uh, Father Abraham, she left her house, left everything, right? She stood, I mean, she, she rode on the camel, but there'll be candlelight nights. And the Bible says she brought her mates along, okay? And uh, Abraham's servant wasn't alone also. So there, there are a lot of people. But those candlelight, she will say, I, I've never seen Isaac. Can you please tell me more about him? Is he handsome? Is he kind? And most of all, does he love God? And those nights, it's like, tell me the story of Jesus. That's where we are now. We are Rebecca. Amen. God sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit doesn't call attention to himself. He calls attention to Jesus. He's here to reveal all the glories of Jesus, all the splendors of our Lord. Amen. And uh, we are the bride. So now he's telling us the beauty of Jesus. He, we love him having not seen him. Just like Rebecca had, not having seen Isaac, she fell in love with him along the journey. And why is it the longest chapter? Because God is still moving, bringing forth a bride for his son. You know, you just heard something that is worth going to a Bible college for the entire thing. You're seeing the purpose of God now. So whatever we do, your, your career, your ministry, your, your, whatever you do in your life, it is all a picture of this beautiful relationship, this love relationship. God is calling us into the circle of love. Long before there was man, the Father loved the Son. The Son loves the Father. And the Holy Spirit is there in the spirit of love. Amen. And then God decided out of love to have man. And then it's a picture of God made man, it's a picture of husband and wife, man and woman. And then it's a picture of, in the book of Ephesians, Jesus and the bride. So when God made Adam and Eve, He had in mind Jesus and His bride. His bride is what? Made of the many-membered body of Christ. Amen. So you see, oh, you mean Jesus' love for us is like a husband's love for his wife? No, no, no. Husband's love for his wife is like to Jesus' love for us. He is the first reason. You know why God made you a father? You say, oh, father's love. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I worship you. And until you have a child. Then you realize you love the child right after he soiled himself. And you have to clean. Your wife says, I do it a lot. Yeah. It's your turn now. Huh? <laughs> Ever had that, guys? And then you realize as you're doing it, you know, and, and the child is just looking at you, that cherubic smile, you know, and you realize, you know, you just sought yourself, you know, and I'm doing a, 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 a sacrifice here, but I love you. I'll not throw you away just because you're dirty. And all of a sudden, you look at your child, and all of a sudden, you, you wish your child would enter a world clean, holy, pure, lovely, not being warped, not growing up too fast not suffering depression, not wanting to go out. You know, you want him to grow strong in wisdom and stature, in favour with God and man. Amen. It's a father's heart, isn't it? Wait! Why did God give us parenting? He's setting you up to know this is what it means for me to love you. 
And yet, a father's love for a child is only a small inkling of that. You can multiply that a thousand times. No, no. A hundred thousand times. No, no. A million times. It will still not come close to God's love for you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So it's all about love. So here, He loved them to the uttermost. <laughs> one, one verse. We have to uh, bring up whatever God has for us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. And supper being ended, and here comes a very sad, a negative, uh, uh, dark sh- shadow on this whole thing. Who was there? Judas. And supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Okay? God put that in so that we all know that Jesus knew he was there. In fact, a while later, he says, one of you shall betray me. Remember that? Very I say unto you, one of you shall betray me. Didn't catch him by surprise. He's showing you that in spite of this, he loved them to the uttermost. Including Judas. Next verse, verse 3. Jesus knowing, I love this, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. The Father had given, how, how much things? All things, where? Into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Now, think about this. The Bible doesn't say Jesus just rose up. Obviously, they're all tired. The disciples were all waiting for one another to wash. And and the job back then of washing the feet of guests was actually the part of a slave in those days. And Jesus rose up. No, no, no. I, I, I got to backtrack. doesn't say that He rose up immediately. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into His hands, with those hands, knowing that His Father has given all things into His hands, He held the soiled feet of His disciples in those hands. Those hands who has all power. Why? Because the one who has all power in his hands is the one who has all love in his heart. If all the power in his hands, he could destroy the betrayer. If all power in his hands, what does God, what does love, what does love delight in? Serve. That's why you don't mind serving your family when you love them. Don't mind serving the loved ones because you love them. See, service is born out of love. He wants to love them. Some of my wife would say, well, let, let Justin do it, you know. And now he's, uh, he's already uh, past 10 already, past 10 years or so. Let him do it. But sometimes I just want to do it for him. Why? I still get a chance to serve. I don't want him to grow up too fast. I want him, you know, right? I I know, I know. Let him have, learn and all. I I do give him those times also. All right? But sometimes I just do things for him. Sometimes I'll put the clothes on for him. He can't do it himself because I know that all too soon they're up and gone. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Amen? Love delights to serve and to give. So, with all the power he has, what does he delight to do? He served. That's a, you know, proud people cannot serve. They cannot give. The problem is, it's not that, oh, you are very stingy. You're not. It's just that when people are proud, it tells us they are insecure. Because Jesus, knowing knowing, in the calm consciousness of knowing that He has all power in His hands, that He came from God, and He's going back to God. With that calm consciousness of all these verities, He stooped down and washed their feet. Only people who know who they are can be humble. Why are people not humble? Because they are insecure. They doubt themselves. They're actually insecure, but they 
they try to cover up. Okay, never mind. Pastor Pring, please go on. Go on, okay? okay? Don't, don't, don't stay there. I don't like it! Okay. Okay, I just go on. All right. So he rose from supper, laid aside his garments. He took a towel, girded himself. So obviously, they're all looking at one another and saying, who will do this service? There's no slave here. All right, so uh, John, is it your turn? Uh, uh, Peter, is it your turn? And Peter said, no, no, no. See, I'm seated by Jesus. And John said, I'm busy lying back on Jesus' breast. All right? And, uh, and uh, Judas said, I- I'm busy counting money. All right? So how about Thomas? Thomas says, I doubt it's my turn. All right? Uh, <laughs> Amen? And all of a sudden, with that wonderful statement, Jesus knowing, He got up, He took a basin and a towel, began to wash the disciples' feet. All right, next verse. Then He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to Him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to Him, What I'm doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Now stop. If we think, as it's often taught, that what Jesus did is just to show us an example of humility. This being the last act in this upper room is the last act of our Lord before He goes to the cross. And there's something symbolic in this act. If we think it's just, as it's often taught, there's just a a, a lesson in humility, we are sadly mistaken. Because what He said to Peter, when Peter says, Lord, do you wash my feet? And He said, what I do now you do not know. What I do now, you do not understand. Now. Do you think for one moment that it takes a long time for him, for Peter to realize that the Lord is being humble? For all of them down there, the 12, to realize the Lord is being humble? It's a lesson of humility? No, it's very obvious. Don't take one hour later for the rep. Oh, he was showing us humility. And yet the Lord says, what I'm doing now, you do not understand now. But you will know hereafter. You will know after this. I'm quoting a lot from the King James, I realize. It says hereafter in King James. You will know after this. That means the act is symbolic. Because if it's just a a lesson of humility, they would all know it now. Then. Right? Right? But he says, you don't understand what I'm doing now. But you will know after this. After this is when the Holy Spirit comes and He indwells you. Then you will know what I'm doing. Are you with me so far? Now, this is like, Peter Peter is like the guy uh, who says things that you want to say sometimes but don't get a chance to say. You're too, you're too smart to say. So you, you, you got Peter to say it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you want, you, you want to ask some question? You ask your, your, your classmate, okay, why don't you, you put up your hands and ask? I don't appear stupid. And I, I think it is a stupid question. So anyway, you, you get someone else to ask, right? So Peter is that kind of person. He pictures our flesh, but his affections are real. He does love the Lord. Okay, but it's a picture of the flesh, how the flesh tries to love the Lord. You see, it's either, are you washing my feet? Then after Jesus says what I'm doing now, you don't understand, right? Just be humble and accept it, right? Look at Peter's response then you will never wash my feet. Lord, you never wash my feet. Now, we can understand because he has real affections for Jesus. He has love. I mean, love is real. The love is there. Come on. Right? But it's still the flesh. Now, I think many of us, I don't know about you, but it's me for sure. When I can, like, the Lord asks me to do something, I'm willing to show my love. All right? I want to show my love by, by doing a lot of things that he tells me to. But when he says, sit down, I want to bless you. I want to allow you to have this. I want to bless you with this thing. I want to bless you with that. I want to give you this. I want to bless you with this. I find it hard. Say, Lord, no, 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 Lord. You'll never do that. No, Lord, you must not. But who are you saying not to? You know what what hurts love? When you want to give and the person doesn't accept. Now, you and I don't understand fully because we we are not perfect in love. We're not so full of love. Don't give, don't give, law. I don't take, don't take, la. <laughs> you see, we're not full of love. But you know what hurts love? Perfect love. You know what hurts love? Some mothers understand this. You know what really hurts love? When the one you love rejects your gift. So sometimes, 
You know, you, you must allow your spouse when he wants to do something for you. Yeah, I know, I know already, I know already. Just let him do it. You want to sh- share something? Yeah, I know, I know, I know already. Just know already and just still get, let him do it. It gives him pleasure. Or the wife wants to do something, right? And the husband, no need, no need, no need, no need. But if you see that it gives her pleasure, let her do it. I want to make you something that is really something that you will love for your birthday. No need, love. We can just go out. No. <laughs> need. Learn to receive love. Somehow, you know, that's in us, right? We just reject love. It's the flesh, you know. It is the flesh. And this is where I suffer from. Okay? The, the church wants to bless me and I say no. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I'm not thinking what you are thinking. <laughs> where the Lord has spoken to me, I must obey. Right? But it's like, no, 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 no. That's the flesh. Number two, then Jesus answered him, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Now look at the flesh. Simon Peter answered, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Come on, Lord, lay it all over. Hold me, come on. Lay it on me. See how extreme? At first, wrath is You cannot, no, 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 la, no, la. You know? He have a piece of can, no, la, no, la. You know? Like... Like someone I know, you know, in America, he was one of the first times in America, and, and they offer a piece of cake. You know, they don't know our tradition, right? We must reject a number five or number four, all right? So you, when people give you a piece of cake, uh, our Chinese mentality is that you can't say, oh, thank you, all right? The Americans will say that, but we, we must say, no, no, no la, no la. Now, first no. All right, we, man, we, we are memorizing it. Trust me, we are memorizing it. It's the first no. Come on, it looks good, man. The, that cake looks good. Then say, no, no, have it. It's, it's delicious. In your mind, I know it is. <laughs> All right? But no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Then, really? Are you sure you don't want? No, no, number three, really. Come on, number four. All right, number four, I'll take. And number four, come on. Okay. <laughs> you said so. See, they don't understand your culture, you know. All right, learn to say thank you. Take it. Amen? So, Jesus says, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. So, he says, no, 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 no. Now you go to extreme. Not only my feet, my hands, my head. Now, let me just tell you this. Notice what Jesus said about this washing. I'm going to stop here right now and say that Jesus, the whole verses that we read just now, tells us the background before he did this act. Knowing his hour had come, that he will depart from this world to go to the Father, knowing that the Father has given all things into his hands and that he came from God and that he's going to God, he rose from supper, right? Which means what? As far as he's concerned, the act of the cross and all that now is behind him. It's a picture of he rose from the Lord's Supper, which means dead. He rose... And he's showing us in the upper room, the third heaven, what he is doing right now for us all at the Father's right hand. Remember what he said one time? The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And he even says that those servants who are found faithful, when I come again, I will put them, I'll sit them at the table. I glit myself and I'll serve them. In other words, he still abides a servant. The gospel of the servant is the gospel of Mark, written by a servant who failed, about the servant who never failed. Jesus wants to be your servant. I know he is Lord. He is my Lord. Hallelujah. But he wants to serve you. And just because you think that maybe oh, he rose from the dead now, he's right now in his, in his uh, amazing glorified body and uh, he is in heaven, you know, and uh, he, you know, I, I, just, I just cannot perceive that he, he will care for me the same way anymore. That's why he started by saying he loved them to the uttermost, which means in heaven now he still loves you. 
And what this act is all about, thank God this act wasn't done outside the upper room. It was done after he says he's going to God. Amen. This is what he's doing for us now at the Father's right hand. You know what is he doing now as a high priest? He's the Father's, at the Father's right hand, he is our high priest. You know what he's doing now? Washing your feet. Wow. He's washing your feet. Have you availed yourself of this washing? Is the Bible a closed book in your house? Is, is the, what do you call that, uh, airport or whatever you're using to listen to the sermons, is this something that you're not using anymore? Because how can he, the washing here is the washing of the water with the Word. Right? Come on. The picture here is that the water in the basin is a picture of the Word. How does Jesus wash you today? With the Word. Ephesians chapter 5. It says, Your husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church. You see, husband and wife relationship is about me and the... My wife is Jesus and the church. Husband love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. It doesn't say she gave herself for me. It says I give myself for her, husbands. Right? Learn, learn to sacrifice little things, you know, for her. Even, you, even if she doesn't know about it, give yourself for her. Okay? Amen. There are things I do for my wife, if I give myself, that I don't want her to know also. Now that I share this publicly, she probably will ask me later on, what is the thing and all that. Okay? So, sometimes you do that, right? There's a big piece of uh, drumstick, and a smaller piece of drumstick, all right? Somehow you, you, you give it to her first, right? <laughs> no, amen. <laughs> you are, all right? Start with small things first. Amen? Learn to find joy and pleasure just in loving. Don't find your joy only after there's a response. Find your joy and delight in loving. Be addicted in loving even if there's no response. That goes for your children as well. Find your joy in loving. And if there's any reward, whatever it is, look to the Lord. Amen. He, nothing passes His eye. Amen. He gave Himself for her at the cross, for the church, that He might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the Word, that He might present her to Himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish, Every woman want, want to be holy. Holy means complete. Amen. Unique. Set apart. And without blemish. And without spot in the natural. Am I right? I'm going to give an altar call for liars. Every woman wants her face to be without blemish, without spot. Right? You know, you know who put it there? The Lord. Now, now you know it's, it's scriptural. <laughs> I believe that some things in our, our instinct to care for, it's, it's all put there by God. Women want to look nice, beautiful. You know? It's not vanity. It is, now you go to the extreme, everything. Uh, your husband is working, you know, every day so that to provide you the, the kind of beauty stuff that only the royalties can afford. You know, I'm not talking about that. Just a desire to be clean, a desire to be presentable. That's a woman's, you know, that's how God made a woman. Because it's a picture of the church. And how does Jesus cleanse the church? With the washing of water of the Word. Husband, love your wife like this. That Jesus gave Himself for her, that's one, the first thing. That He might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the Word, that He might present her to Himself a glorious church. Let me stop here and tell you how a lot of people preach. I've heard this preach before. Jesus is cleansing us by the Word, but if you don't receive the Word, let me tell you this, okay? The church today is horrible. Look at the church today. I don't think He's coming back anytime soon. Have you seen the church lately? All natural. Natural eyes, natural talk, natural things. Have you seen the church lately? I'll tell you this, if Jesus comes down halfway and looks at the church today, He will definitely postpone the marriage. I'll tell you right now, the church is definitely not without spot, not without blemish. The only problem with all these things is this. Even in the Greek, 
tenses, right? It tells you this, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water. It's actually he might sanctify and cleanse her, that he might sanctify. It's not something that he will do in the future. It is something in the aorist tense. It's past tense. Now watch this. You see that, that he might present her to himself. The preachers would like, you know, preach like that. Okay? They say that, but the church without spot, God is raising a church without spot, without blemish in the eyes of man or in the eyes of God? Obviously, in the eyes of man, he's referring to man. Right? One day, he will present to himself a glorious church. But friend, check out in the original Greek that he might present her is present active participle. Which means right now, he's already presenting you in his eyes without spot, without wrinkle or any such thing. He sees you beautiful right now. Oh, Pastor, I got a lot of spots. He does not see your spots, spotty. Oh, <laughs> child of God. You want to see how he looks at your Song of Songs, a picture of Jesus and the church. And this is how the bridegroom looks at the bride. How beautiful you are, my darling. Music, please. <laughs> this one should be, should be uh, quoted with beautiful music. How beautiful you are, my darling. How beautiful you are. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. It's pure. Have you seen the eyes of a dove? It's teary eyes. It's very beautiful. The eyes of a dove. All right? Not, not, not hawk, huh? not vulture. Huh? I'm not referring to your husband. Or your, I'm not, see the dove in his eyes. It's not spiritual. Your hair is like a flock of goats. You know, the flock of goats in, in Israel is very dark, the hair. Right? It's like your hair is shiny and their, their, their hair, the flock of goats, their hair is healthily shining with luster, a shiny luster. Your hair is so beautiful. He says, like flock of goats descended from Mount Gilead. And Mount Gilead is where the Bible talks about a balm in Gilead, healing, healthy hair, beautiful hair. The Lord looks at her and says, you are beautiful. How beautiful, not only beautiful, how beautiful you are, my darling. You read, you read uh, some of the songs, it goes on and says, there is no spot in you. Let me ask you a question. If this is in the natural, at any time can the Lord say this to His people? whether it's Israel or the church. Can he say that at any time? If it's in the natural. No. Who without us today can say we are without spot in experience? But in his eyes, the Bible says in Ephesians or Colossians, he presents you holy, unreprovable in his sight. There was a, a wizard or a I don't know what you call him. Okay, he's a half past six prophet. He's not a real prophet. But the Holy Spirit allowed him to, to say something, one of the most beautiful prophecies over the nation of Israel. He was hired by King Balak. Right? His name was Balaam. To curse the, the children of Israel because he, he has a reputation. Those he curse are cursed. So he said, curse his people. He was about to curse them. He says, God has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. And the king is saying, <laughs> then he goes on, nor has God seen perverseness in Israel. Huh? <laughs> it says, he goes on to say, he has not beheld iniquity. He said, what? These people has no iniquity? Stop! He didn't say that. He didn't say they have no iniquity, no sin. He says, God has beheld no iniquity. You see, his holy eyes is per it's because he is holy. It is because he is righteous that his holiness and righteousness saw Jesus carrying all our sins, the sins of our entire life. And that was when God judged and punished his son and poured out his wrath and condemnation on his son for every one of the sins that he carried, including all our sins. Amen? That was when God saw your sins, but in the body of his son on the cross. So that today, God sees you without sin. Hear me out first. I did not say there's no sin in us. 
I say, in His sight, there is no sin on us. Amen. When He looks on us, there's no sin. Amen. It can happen to Israel back then through the blood of bulls and goats. How much more you and I? Amen. Imagine yeah. facing life every day knowing that you know you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Even when you fail and all that, what is the number one accusation? Hey, you didn't say that properly. Hey, you didn't. Hey, you lost your temper here. Hey, you lost your temper there. Before you know it, the whole day you are just crushed if you are conscious of your sins and failures. But if you go on saying, "Thank God," it reminds you, "I am the righteousness of God in Christ." It will lift you higher and higher and higher. And just remember that righteousness is not of you; it is in Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Boy. I just feel like I'm starting, but I gotta let you go in a while. But let's go back here to John 13. Then Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Now, a lot of people think that if we don't let Jesus wash us today, now again, how do you get Jesus to wash us? Some people don't avail themselves of this service. You know what I do before I read my Bible or whatever? I don't, okay, not all the time, but many times I will say, Lord Jesus, I place my hands, my, my legs in your hands. It takes humility to, you know, I'm, because everything is, no, how can I? He's Lord, right? But He wants that. Wash my feet. Now, this, you see, um, He did not say that this is a washing of salvation. Because washing of salvation, if I don't wash you, He didn't say, you have no part in me. No, He says, you have no part with me. The disciples were already in Him. He says, you have no part with me. If you want to uh, uh, have a successful relationship, you must be with the person flowing together, fellowship together. Amen. With. Like yoke together. With. Right? So, you cannot be with, with me. Not you're already, part of, you're already in me. He didn't say, if He said, in me, that means this washing is you, for salvation. No, what he's doing right now is only for believers. Then he goes on to explain, drop down. Not only my, my feet, my hands, my head. He says, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet. But it's completely clean and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. Okay, let's, let's remove the last part because it's not meant for us. It's meant for Judas. He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet. He who is bathed, that is salvation. There's one bath and that bath is never to be repeated. When you come to Jesus Christ and you are born again, He washed you clean. That's the bath, the washing of regeneration that never needs to be repeated. Yeah. You are completely clean. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Some translation put it this way. He who is... Com Okay, he who is uh, washed and then needs only to wash his feet, it confuses people. That's the old King James Version. But the two words are different in the Greek. He who is luo needs only to nipto his feet. Luo is all over buff. That's salvation. We got saved. Never to be repeated. But the analogy back then, even the Roman uh, uh, soldiers and all that, when they wash in Israel, they wash thoroughly over, they still have to walk outside. And their feet contract what? The dirt. Do they have to bathe all over again? No. They just take water and clean their feet. That's the picture there. And notice that once you are bathed, you are completely clean. Have you ever said, I'm completely clean? Jesus said so. You are completely clean. He who is bathed is completely clean. And you only have to what? Wash what? Nipto is used for washing hands, washing feet, smaller parts, or washing face also. You only have to wash your feet. And that is your daily, as you walk through this life, the daily humdrum of daily life, the duties of home life, the responsibilities of business life, you know, and when you go out there, the things that you see on media and all that, it's like dust accumulating. Dust accumulating. And it does accumulate too much, right? It can become a sin. And dust is the devil's food. God said to the devil in the, in the garden, dust you shall eat all the days of your life. All right? So the way you wash away dust is by washing of the 
water of the Word. Your feet represent your walk, your daily walk, while you're waiting for Jesus to come. Amen. Your daily walk is washed with the water of the Word. Isn't it beautiful? In the Old Testament, you know, they have a lever. You know, the lever. A lever. Show them a picture of lever. Yeah, they have a lever to wash. They wash their hands there. Okay, no one really knows how it looks like. But it's made of copper. Okay, so the priests, they have to go in, lest they die. The verse says that God says, um, you shall make a lever of bronze, with its base also of bronze, for, for washing. Aaron, the high priest, a picture of Jesus and his sons, all of us, shall wash their hands and their feet in water from it. Drop down. So they shall wash their hands and their feet, lest they die. It shall be a statute forever to them, to him and his descendants throughout their generations. Of course, all this is pictures. By the way, have you noticed that I just preached from the Old Testament? Okay. Just let you know. In case we're like, oh, he just preached on Paul. <laughs> All right. It, it, is, it is the whole council, bro. Okay. So here, they shall wash their hands and their feet lest they die. I think, personally, why, do you, why does God put lest they die? I believe that even this washing, whether you're listening through a, um, you know, through you're watching social media and watching me or any other speaker who is preaching the Word of God, make sure it's Christ-centered, scriptural. All right? Whether you're studying on your own, make sure that you avail yourself of this washing. Not only spiritually, all right, it'll keep you in step with Christ, flowing or walking in the Spirit, all right, having part with Him, but it will also, I believe, lest they die means it will give you life. Isn't there a verse that says this? In Proverbs 4 verse 22, God's words today are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. The more time you spend in the Word, and, and you know, it's not just opening up you know, uh, legalistically and, and uh, uh, without prayer and all that, but knowing that Jesus stands ready to take the basin, the Bible, and the Word and speak the right word to you. Then he can say to you, John uh, uh, 15 verse 3, he says, even in the upper room, he says this, you are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Amen? So, just now he says, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Am I right? Go back to that verse, we close with that. That he might present her to himself a glorious church. Notice, he might present her to himself. It's not for the church to be presented to some pastor or preacher or archbishop or whatever it is. It's for Jesus to present the church to himself. And it's his prerogative to say, I present you to myself a glorious church. Amen. Present, active, participle. It's right now how he sees you. He sees you, what? Glorious church. Not only that, not having spot. All wrinkle. Wrinkle is what? O-H. Now, I know it's spiritual, but let's not just keep things spiritual. Maybe the washing of the water of the Word will keep you young. Amen. Without wrinkle or any such thing. Amen. What about sickness? Any such thing. What about depression? Any such thing. But that she should be holy and without blemish. Woo. If there's a woman like that, wow. Amen? But wait, what he's telling us is this. Talk to your wife and present her. Don't have to present her to anyone else. In your eyes, always present her as without spot. You, find, you don't find fault. You're not fault finding. You are good finding. Listen. Don't fault fine. Good fine. Alright? Number two, when you talk to her, she don't feel old. Ah, yeah la, you're getting old already. Okay. <laughs> because talking about husbands and wives as well, you see. How do you, how do you, how do you wash her with the word? The things that you say, does, does it make her feel old? Useless? And then... Make her feel like, wow, she's glorious. 
in your eyes. Amen. None of us have arrived. But what we are seeing is the glory of Jesus. As we behold Him, we become like Him. You are the stronger one, husbands. You are the greater one. It is your glory. Glory is added to you, the Bible says. It's a glory for a man to overlook a transgression. You become more glorious. Every time you overlook a transgression, don't fault fine. Find good. Make it a, make it a assignment from the upper room this week. If you fail, what do you say? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ and continue. <laughs> if she does something that you feel like, oh man, or well, that part, that one especially gets me. What do you do? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ <laughs> and find something about her. Yeah, oh, but, but my friend's wife uh, does this and all that. But your friend's wife does not do what your wife does. And that girl doesn't do what she does and what she does, the girl doesn't do it. Everyone have their strength. Look for it! Amen. You present her. Didn't say she present herself. Hey, you better learn to be without spot now. Nah. You better learn to be without blemish. Nah. You better <laughs> learn to be whole. Unfortunately, that's the approach of the church. No, my friend. He's saying the way Jesus washes us is not by the law. Have you noticed that? In the upper room, he just demonstrates you are already clean by the word I've spoken unto you. I'm closing now. <laughs> Final close. Have you noticed that? He's not there. Okay, listen. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's not the word that cleanses. The upper room, what's the word that cleanses? I am the vine. It's who he is. Right after that, he says, you are clean already. It's the identity in Christ. And now, you know, you know what I'm going to say to you? You are already clean. I just wash your feet. But I must tell you this. This is important. All right? This is about, I just forgot something. Can I share with you real fast? Okay, Jesus said, do you know what I've done to you? You know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord and you say, for, you say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also walk, ought to wash one another's feet. So you know what? I look for people. Something I purposely look for people to share truths that will make them live refreshed. Amen. Only so far as Paul says, he refreshed me often. Philemon, many saints have been refreshed by you. This is the washing the water. Find people. You know what's going to happen if you do that? No, by the way, notice the inversion Jesus used. You call me teacher and Lord. Jesus answered, if I then, your Lord and teacher. That's an inversion. So a lot of people want to follow Jesus as an example. Then Lord. Jesus says, accept me as Lord. And then you can do. Okay? Now listen. Drop down all the way. I've given you an example that you should do as I've done to you. Go to verse 17, the last one. This is the last verse. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Makarios, happy. You'll be happy. Ah, man, I'm telling you, every time you wash another sister's feet, refresh them with the word as you speak to them, you wash another brother's feet as you wash your wife's feet, your family's feet. You know who is happy? You. Makar blessed are you. You know who is blessed? You. Right, so, in other words, don't forget this part here. This is the how to love one another as I have loved you. Amen? Find someone. You can text. Now that you can text, washing of the water can happen by texting. <laughs> yeah. You have someone come to your mind, speak to them, encourage them. Yeah. You just wash their feet. Jesus today washes through you. I preach myself happy. Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! I love it. I'm so glad I came to church today. Preach it, Pastor Prince. Hallelujah. And you look good from behind. Hey, hallelujah. Whoa. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wow, I'm so glad I came. If I didn't come today, I won't hear this. If I didn't come, I won't be here. I won't be hearing. Anyway, praise the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed all across this place. Friend, I believe, I believe right now the Holy Spirit it's not Pastor Prince. It's the Holy Spirit that has given you a glimpse of the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ. That how Christ died on the cross for all our sins, was raised again from the dead, conquered grave, death, and hell itself. And He's now at the Father's right hand, still serving you. 
If you want Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior and Lord, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank You for the gift of Your Son, my Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died on the cross for my sins. He was raised from the dead when You justified me. And I thank You. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Stand to your feet. If you pray that prayer, you are part of the body of Christ. That mystery hidden from ages, you are part of that now. Amen. You are in the body of Christ. God is now your Father. Amen. The Lord bless you this coming week. Let's not take it for granted. Amen. The devil has devices out there against you and against your family. Let's believe God. Father, in Jesus' name, make all the crooked places straight in front of them throughout this week. Cause them to be at the right place at the right time. Enjoying your goodness and favour, Father. May they find favour in the sight of everyone, Lord, throughout this week. And Father, I pray that you'll prosper everything that they touch. Father, I pray, Lord, that their children and their families, Lord, will live in the upper room. Husbands washing the wife with the washing of water of the Word. Encouraging one another, washing the children with the washing of water of the Word. Having a new spirit to serve and to find the joy just in serving, just in loving. Let this happen, Lord, today. May you give them grace as they embark on this. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Introducing the new Joseph Prince app. We've designed the new app with one thought in mind, to make connecting with the Lord daily simple and easy for you. Through the guided daily experience, spend time in His presence and build a habit of starting your day right with the Word of God. Let's pray this short prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your deep love and detailed care for me. I'm grateful that you value me so much and that you know even before I ask what I really need. Help me to remember that no problem or need is too small for you to handle. I bring all my cares to you, knowing that you are attentive to every little detail of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, everyone is looking to amuse themselves. They are engaged in social media because there's a constant craving to be amused. Musing is opposite from amusement. Muse means you are silently contemplating, meditating, so shut down everything else that will distract you. Spend time, bring up that Word of Scripture, meditate on it, and the Word of God will release health, life, prosperity into your life. Thanks to the support of our Gospel Partners, the Daily Experience is now free for everyone. Try it now on the brand new Joseph Prince app. Download the new app today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, but don't go just yet. If you'd like to receive prayer, share your testimony, or find out more about Gospel Partner, just click the link on this screen. If not, I'll see you in the next episode.